at Gamescom. What's it been like for you? I mean, what are you guys showing here? We're showing the Elder Scrolls Online today. We've showed it uh, many times before, but what's really interesting about this build is we've had videos showing our first person before, but this is the first time that people actually get to play it. And not only do they get to play it, but we have another booth out on the floor for the general public, and it's all open. You can walk in, you can see it. We have the gameplay up on big screen so everybody can see it. So it's been really exciting seeing uh, what everybody thinks of it, what everybody thinks of the first person, and the game in general, because this is, for a lot of people, the first time they've actually got to see it live. I, I noticed that, that a few developers have actually said uh, with the games that they're showing on the on the show floor that they are taking a lot of feedback. They're actually writing up and then that's being brought back to the teams back home. Is that, is that the same with you guys? Uh, absolutely. So we've been uh, doing shifts running back and forth from the business area over to the consumer booth and just standing at the end of the and the line as people finish playing say what do you think how did it go is there anything that we could do better uh, you know are you already in the beta how are things going did you like it did you what did you not like and we've gotten a lot of really great feedback just from that and being able to talk to people straight on the floor and they don't always realize they're a develop you're a developer so they're brutally honest <laughs> brutally honest which is great because it's exactly what we need was there any surprises uh, yes, we've had people, we've had one particular person that has stood in line four times. You, you, the line is about three to four hours long, and this person has stood in it four times to play. That is staggering. I get antsy when I'm standing in line for like 30 minutes to get, a, to get my lunch. You tell me one person has basically come to Gamescom solely to play the game. I'm, I think that must be it. Uh, I got to meet him yesterday, and he had an Elder Scrolls shirt on, and I was like, oh, I... I your dedication is admirable. <laughs> We've had a lot of great feedback. Uh, everything's been really positive, not only just people playing and the feedback, but the mood and uh, the atmosphere in the area. Everybody's really excited to see it, and I'm really glad to not let them down. <laughs> I find it interesting saying about uh, the first person viewpoint that for a game that's as sprawling as Elder Scrolls Online, that seems to be the headline. Anytime we're talking about it, it always comes up. Is, is it a bit weird for you guys that obviously you have so much to give and so much to show and there's just this one particular subject, this little small bit of the game that people come back to? Uh, well, we knew it was going to be a really big thing and, and honestly when you're playing it, it feels very different from when you're playing it in third person. Because when you're playing it in third person, you have an overview of the world, and you can see everything around you. It's probably the ultim optimal view for PvP, being able to see guys attacking you from behind. Uh, most Elder Scrolls, uh, traditional Elder Scrolls games, all the enemies are in front of you, so there's nothing behind you. So you can constantly backpedal. Whereas in our game, you wouldn't be able to do that in, third per in first person. But what's really interesting in first person is when you zoom in, the world just kind of, the perception gets really, uh, close and it feels just more visceral when you're up close to everything and you kind of just get lost in picking up bottles, opening ch chests, uh, picking through somebody's drawer in their house and it just it, it really drove home that feeling of an Elder Scrolls game and we knew it was vitally important but we didn't realize until we started playing it the huge not only per perception that it gives but the emotional impact that it brings to the game as well. Saying about that, about making the Elder Scrolls game, um, do you guys feel like, there might have been a little bit of skepticism when this was first night, do you guys feel that you, you guys have won over the critics? Uh, I think that when we say this is the next Elder Scrolls game, uh, people are starting to believe us. <laughs> uh, people are starting to believe us. And in fact, this is the next Elder Scrolls game. It is the next uh, chapter of the story, even though it's a thousand years before the events in Skyrim. So we really took it on as that sort of project. It was an Elder Scrolls game first and anything else second. So the fact that it's a social experience online and all of that, uh, we really wanted to bring a social experience but we had to make an Elder Scrolls game to even get to that second point. So when you're not touring the world, enjoying these beautiful booth-like surroundings, are you just, just stuck in the studio, head down, hammering away? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. Um, it, it, it's really uh, exciting to be able to come back from shows like this, because you get a lot of feedback, you get to see how people could play, because you know when you play the game, you know exactly what all the enemy abilities are, you know exactly what your abilities are, you know exactly uh, if you've run through the quest, you run through it a zone six, seven, eight times, you know exactly where everything is. But 
seeing people play and seeing them explore and seeing them use the compass, it's a whole new kind of experience for us seeing how people interpret what we put into the game. So when you go back, you're, it's really uh, inspiring to come back from shows and get back to work. So it's really energizing again to get back and do that. So what's the feedback being for the uh, creature combat? Uh, really positive. Unfortunately, everybody's playing in Bleak Rock, which is a starter zone. Um, so, um, but I will say there's a there's a bat uh, called Deathclaw right. in the zone. He's got the highest kill rate so far of players. He's been killing players left and right. Death is in his name, so it's a little bit to be expected. Uh, bears have also been taking out people here and there, but it's not really until you get to around 8 and 10 when you start seeing monsters working together and start doing things like calling out to each other for heals. You start seeing necromancers sacrificing themselves to summon giant undead. You don't see mini dark anger portals just start spinning up and spilling out danger wherever you're standing. Uh, so you get that a little bit later on because by uh, the little bit later levels we want you to have mastered the core mechanics before we start introducing the tactical mechanics. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. With, with the co-op experience you're getting from these different enemy types, I mean, is that a massive headache to try and work out right? I imagine you guys have like a white sheet somewhere, a whiteboard going right that, with that, and this, with this. Is that the way it works? Uh, sort of, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, the way that I design all the monsters is they kind of have like categories of what the monsters are. Uh, but for example, if you're fighting a fire mage uh, and you learn what a fire mage does, a fire mage shoots a line of fire that you can dodge. They put down pools of fire that uh, if oil's in the area, it can be lit, uh, the, air, the oil would be lit on fire. And you say, okay, well, I know what a fire mage does. I'll be fighting a fire mage for a long time. But I don't know necessarily what a fire mage that's part of a necromancy cult might do because they might just kill themselves and summon an, uh, an undead. Or I don't know what a fire mage of a bandit group will do because they might actually just roll dodge my attacks and then set down bear traps all around me. So we kind of take what the core of the monster is and just add a flavor to it depending on the faction that they're in. Even if they're an enemy uh, NPC faction, like if you're Ebonheart and you're fighting Aldmeri NPCs, you'll hear, hear them you know, saying like, for the queen and start putting down caltrops everywhere and stuff like that. So just changing the flavor here and there, not necessarily making like 10,000 different mechanics that you need to know, they're, they're, the mechanics are really limited to the core and then we just mix and match how we present them to you and see how you can react to them. So is it like new flavor, new complication? Yes, exactly. It, it's, it's a lot less of all of a sudden the game changes and everything that I knew no longer applies. It's just now we've added this layer of flavor to it. So where are you now and what have you got left to do? Well, that sounds like such a broad question. There's quite a lot in that. What's the roadmap for the next couple of months anyway? Uh, so for the main part of the team where it's reacting to beta feedback, because we're in a closed NDA beta right now, uh, we'll be doing all beta feedback for a very, very long time. Um, on the uh, monster creature team, uh, we're really focusing on cleaning up the monsters, making sure everything is... Uh, uh, cleaned up as far as bugs, but what's really interesting is watching people play and seeing if they get the mechanics, and if they do get it, great, and if they don't, how can we present it better and things like that, or is it a mechanic that is just not worth putting in the game? So we're doing a lot of that. Also the team, once we, once we hit a certain point, and we, uh, we'll start tr stress testing to soon, so stay tuned to your emails if you're signed up for beta, because we'll start needing a lot of people to uh, blow up our, our, uh, our tech to make sure that uh, we can handle uh, the first couple months of uh, influx of players. But uh, one of the things that we'll be focusing on once we get past the uh, polish and beta feedback is we have a lot of plans in place for what we're going to be delivering for post-launch, and we have a pretty aggressive post-launch schedule as far as updating the game goes. Some of the first things that go in will be the justice system. So for example, right now you can just take bread and bottles off tables and nobody's going to stop you. Nobody's going to say anything to you. The justice system will be part of that system to make it feel a little bit more like the Elder Scrolls experience that you expect. Uh, we'll also be putting in Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild. Right now, the Mages Guild and the Fighters Guild are in. They have full quest lines as well as full skill lines. So we put in the uh, Dark Brotherhood and Thieves Guild. They will also get their entire storylines as well as entire quest lines. So as the game continues to grow, you can grow your character as well. So once you hit 50, that's just the mathematical stopping point. But you probably only have about 30% of your skills at that point. 
uh, compared to all the skills that you could possibly get in the game. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks so much for coming in.